Hey, what is up, comrades? This is MF Craven here with another review. Tonight, we're going to be reviewing Summer in Mara. Thank you to Chibi Games for giving me a review copy of Summer in Mara. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching. Description. Summer in Mara mixes farming, crafting, and exploring mechanics in a tropical archipelago with a colorful style and strong narrative. Graphics, sound, and art style. Simply put, this is a moving piece of art. It's Harvest Moon meets The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Everything about the art style is perfect, and the score of the game brings it all together into this clash of nostalgia for me. I can't stress enough how wonderful it looks and sounds. Gameplay. Summer in Mara has you play as Koa, a little girl rescued at sea by Yaya, who you now refer to as your grandma. She teaches you the importance of the cycle of life and nature while on your home island. You farm, cut trees for wood, forage for fruits, mine for minerals, make dishes, craft, build on your island, and sail to explore new islands. Koa is an energetic little girl with the hops that would make Michael Jordan envious. She controls smoothly and while appearing to never slow down while sprinting and hopping all over the place, the stamina bar is there to limit that, only replenished by either sleep or eating. And while at sea, after midnight, the little girl needs her rest. So when the clock strikes zero, she'll just go to sleep and continue the next day. Word of advice to people that are sailing. The world of Mara is your playground and there's a myriad of people or um, creatures that need your help. You'll go around cooking dishes, crafting items and harvesting crops for the inhabitants of Mara while trying to figure out life's answers, your grandmother's connection to the world and helping your little buddy Napopo who suddenly drops onto your island. While some have drawn comparisons to Stardew Valley, being a Harvest Moon veteran, I feel like it's more of the pace to the latter, but not as in-depth as either of the two. Price. At the time of this review, I have read that the developer is aiming at around $20 USD. However, if that changes, I will leave the amount of currency on here. How many hours estimated? Now, personally, I am 12 hours into the game and I still have ways to go. I'd say I'm about one-fourth the game in, for reasons you will estimate and figure out on your own in the tutorial. Final Thoughts Summer in Mara is a special game. It's a game I will be showing to my kids in the future, and not only because it's extremely easy, but because of the message it has in it. I was immediately sucked into the world of Mara leaving offerings and paying my respects to my elders. I felt like Koa was a character the inner child and all of us could relate to. However, oftentimes that immersion is broken by some gameplay elements that don't seem to be polished. The lack of calendar or any indication on knowing what day it is makes being a farmer that much harder, especially when more of the map opens up for exploration. The sailing is monotonous early on, only slightly improving later by finding lost crates, but oftentimes containing useless items. The fact that you can only hold 99 of a single item and then being reset to 98, uh, back up to 99 if you get any more of said item, is annoying. I mean, Koa's backpack is already on that Mary Poppins level. Why couldn't she hold 999 of a single item? I mean, she can literally carry a whole oven in her backpack. Spoiler alert, that's an early game mission. Oh, 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 and the missions. Most often, they are unimaginative fetch quests that will have you running back and forth and sometimes even planting seeds that will take up to 10 in-game days to harvest. A day can be taken off vegetation if you water the crop, and water can be attained in a well. But after the water runs out, about three buckets for a regular well. You'll have to wait for rain to fill it up. 
My first rainy day took about four hours into my playthrough to come, and considering on average it rains about 149 days out of the year in the Caribbean, I would really like more rainy days in Mara. Despite all its flaws, I'm still having a lot of fun with the game. When I first was granted access to the game, about a week ago or so, there was many more things wrong with the game, but during this week the dev has been patching the game, listening to feedback, and the quality of life has improved significantly. I was playing the game on a gamepad, and whenever I was trying to make multiple items of any type, it would just send me to the next screen because the right bumper was the same to change the menu item and to supposedly make more items, but that was fixed. The stamina bar would deplete relatively fast, making the player either have to go to sleep or eat, but that was fixed. I had to redo parts of this review because the dev has been on top of game-breaking mechanics. I have faith they can polish what I believe to be the surprise summer hit of 2020. It's quirky, the characters are cute, funny, or some just downright mean. In my humble opinion, it's a far better experience than Animal Crossing New Horizons, and for the asking price, I don't think it's unreasonable. Note that if the price is somehow raised to 40 USD, I will change my mind about the following. Take into consideration that it's aimed to be a more lax game, suitable more for children. Still, I say it's definitely a buy now from me. But I'd like to hear from you, especially if you were one of the backers. Have you encountered any game breaking bugs? Are you having fun with the game? Is it a better experience than Animal Crossing like I believe so? Leave it all in the comments below. Let's talk. Signing off. This has been MF Craven.